Assalamu alaikum, you class alert. Join us every Saturday and Sunday at 9 p.m. Central for the Articles of Belief by Muhammad S. Adley, right here on Sunnah Followers. Ina alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam wa rasulullah. Welcome to our um, new class. Uh, this will be the premiere of our series entitled The Articles of Belief. The Articles of Belief, and this is based on the book that's written by Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli. And inshallah, everyone uh, should now have a copy of this book. For those of you who do not yet have the book, you want to go to atleonline.com. The book is uh, all together just $10. $5 for the book and $5 for shipping. And we will be focusing on this book for the next month, inshallah, or, or two, month or two. And uh, this uh, book goes hand in hand with our six o'clock class because the six o'clock class every day uh, focuses on Wala well better which is the uh, the second part of the Shahada, the testimony of faith, which is uh, speaks about allegiance, allegiance to Allah, allegiance to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and allegiance to the religion and the Muslims. Well, this class will reiterate the first part of the Shahada, which is the la ilaha illallah, what does it mean when we say that we uh, believe in Allah, what are we testifying to? Well, we're testifying to believe that only Allah, that Allah is the only one worthy of worship. But that's not the only thing. We're also testifying and pledging that we believe everything that Allah commanded us to believe. We believe in his books, his prophets, his angels, predestiny, and even the day of judgment and the resurrection. We're also testifying that we believe in everything he's told us of the unseen, even though we can't see it. This is an important point. And I'm going to make this point to the women here from South Africa. Again, for those sisters here from South Africa who have been uh, telling me how they're being taught uh, there that women are supposed to be invisible, to be as if they are not seen. That's impossible because we are not of the unseen world. Women are not jinns. We're not angels, okay? Allah did not create us to be of unseen because we're not of that world. And we're, you know, so again, we have to be very careful when we're learning this religion. We have to be very careful who we are taking our knowledge of Islam from. When you find a person telling you that you're supposed to be as if you're something that Allah didn't create you to be, then that should be a trigger in your brain that this is someone who you shouldn't be listening to because Allah doesn't make mistakes and Allah didn't make any mistakes in any of his creations. And as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasized in many hadiths, Allah doesn't forget either. He didn't forget to make women invisible. He didn't make a mistake by giving women a face. He didn't make a mistake giving us a tongue, a mouth, eyes, nose, hands, feet. So you sisters are gonna have to be very, very careful who you choose to learn this religion from. Okay, because if you got people telling you crap like that, you should know, wait a minute, how can I be invisible when Allah didn't create me to be that way? 
I am not a jinn. I am not part of the unseen. Nowhere does a law say that women should be of the unseen. And I'm proving it to you from the Sunna, because you sisters are here. You see how the women played an, a visible, active role in paving the way for us. They were white, right there with the men of this nation. They were not invisible. Okay, so I want you sisters in South Africa and also my new Shahadas. That's why I'm teaching this book because we have to get back to the basics. You know, Akita is everything. Our belief system is everything. If your belief system is not correct, then none of your good deeds are accepted. And we're gonna talk about that today. Y'all hear me say that a lot. I don't care how many prayers you do, how much charity you give. If you think that Allah made a mistake creating women, or if you think that Allah created women to be of the unseen world, then something is wrong with your aqidah. Y'all understand that? We have to be careful. And this is my advice to you brothers. You brothers have to be careful what you say out your mouth to your women folk. Maybe you don't want your wife to be seen by anyone but you. So word it that way. Tell her, look, I don't want nobody to look at you but me. So stay in the house as my prisoner. I'm your warden. Tell her that. But don't dare tell her that she's supposed to be of the unseen because Allah didn't create no human being to be of the unseen world. Everybody understand that? So that's why I'm teaching this book because we're going over well or well better in the six o'clock class. Well, this class will be re-emphasizing what it means to believe in Allah and his prophets, and his books, and his commands. And also we have another big problem. That's for the sisters, another big problem. We got some brothers here. I've lost a, a brother who I really liked having here come here to learn, but he stopped coming because he got upset because I told him, well, I didn't tell him. I read the verses of the Quran to him where Allah says that the Christians are not Muslims. They're unbelievers, they're Kafirs. He got angry because I used the K word. That's what Kafir means. Kafir is an Arabic word that means unbeliever in English. It's not a bad word. It's just language. Allah says anyone who is upon a belief system other than Islam is a kafir, is a non-believer. And Allah says none of their deeds will be accepted. And should they die upon that belief system, they will be in hell. I didn't make that command, Allah did. But a lot of you brothers, I don't know, you go out and you marry Kafir women and you get angry because somebody uses the word Kafir. It's not my fault that you chose to lower yourself to marry a Kafir. That was your choice. Suffer the consequences, okay? You chose that. The prophet Muhammad didn't marry any Kafir women. The original companions didn't have any calf or wives. Abu Bakr divorced all his wives except one, Umm Ruman, because she was the only one that converted to Islam, okay? So you brothers are gonna have to understand that there are no believers amongst Christians, Jews, or anything else. Because if they were believers, they wouldn't be a Christian. If they were believers, they would be a Muslim. They would worship Allah the way he commanded. 
okay? And they would declare their allegiance to him. And they would be following the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I want you guys to remember, even when Jesus comes back, Jesus will not come back as a prophet. Jesus will come back as a leader of the earth. And even he will be following the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay? So that's why I'm teaching this class. We have to go back and review what it means when we testify to la ilaha illallah, Muhammad or Rasulullah. Every time we make salat, we renew that testimony. Every time you recite el tashahu, the tashahu, you're renewing that pledge to Allah. But how many of us understand what we are pledging? Well, this class will help to uh, remind us of that. So I did post up, and this is what I'm going to try to do. Uh, I did post up on Facebook, and I also posted up on the YouTube channel uh, the pages that we'll be covering each day for this class. This class is only held on Saturdays and Sundays. Today we'll be covering uh, from pages one through pages, uh, not really eight. I told you guys to read from pages one through eight, but we're really gonna be covering pages three through six, okay? So I want everybody to take out their books and I want you to turn to page three because we will begin from page three to page six today, inshallah, because it was too much information I felt uh, to go all the way to eight. We're gonna do from uh, six to, uh, to uh, eight tomorrow, inshallah. So, and just like with any class I teach, I'm asking you to really benefit from this class, from all my lectures, because I am not a lecturer, I am a teacher. There's a difference between a lecturer and a teacher. A lecturer comes and gives a lecture and takes his paycheck and leaves. That's a lecturer. A teacher is different. A teacher will teach and explain. They don't just lecture. They also break it down explain and they ask questions and quiz you on whatever the information is that they're coming with. So what I want you guys to do is when I put the PowerPoint up on the screen, I want you to screenshot each PowerPoint and then at the end of the class, print it out. And when you print it out from your cell phone, staple it together. So you will have like a booklet, which is my explanation. My PowerPoints are the explanation of whatever the pages are that we're reviewing for that day. And you can staple them or clip them to the page. Like for today, clip this to page number three. So that way you will have my notes, my explanation of what will be discussed from pages three to this six. class, because you guys are learning well, I will better but you have to understand those articles of faith too. You have to understand the basics of what it means to believe in Allah. And like the question you ask, you know, all the prophets were Muslim and a lot of Muslims are not aware of that. A lot of the Muslims believe that Jesus was Christian and Moses was, was uh, Jewish when they were all Muslim. But we're going to cover all of that. Okay, and inshallah, this will help you. But let's put the PowerPoint up. And by the way, before I put it up, uh, the sisters on what is this Zoom? I'm getting ready to share you all to Twitch again. Wait a minute, because I need to keep my eye on Twitch. Woo, yeah, look at Twitch. Wait a minute, hold on. Whoa. Okay, so let me put the 
Zoom people on Twitch right quick. Oh, I'm not the host. Wait a minute. Oh, hold on first. Uh oh, that's the PowerPoint. Where's Zoom? This Zoom? Okay, hold on. People, and where's the other Layla at? Okay, give it co host. Okay. Oh, now let me go back to this. Okay, let me put you guys on. Try it again. Twitch. Okay, there's Twitch. All right. Is that screen big enough for y'all? Is it is it full screen on Twitch? Okay, y'all can see that in Zoom, inshallah. And let me share. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on, guys. The sister said I didn't share. I didn't? Oh, okay. Give me a second. Let me take this off of this and put it on my PowerPoint for everyone. Articles. She said I didn't share it on Facebook. Okay, hold on. Let me. Okay, Facebook people, I, it's not in the polygamy group. Oh, give me a minute. Oh, hold on. You sure I didn't see? Oh. Three. Are you on Facebook? Uh, she said I'm not in the polygamy group. I'm trying to. I can't tell. Okay, okay, I just shared you. I, I see, I didn't have you in. Okay, you're in there now. I, yeah, that was the click. You should be in there. Okay, I mean, let me make it big screen. This is the book. Uh, by the way, guys, I'm looking on Twitch so I can, oh, I like this Twitch. Oh my, oh yeah, Twitch is big screen. That's a really big screen for me to see on. Okay, I'm gonna keep in my uh, laptop where I can see that. Cause that's really big for me. Okay. Um, hold on. Slideshow. There it is. This is the book. Uh, the sister is asking, wh what's the book? The Articles of Belief. This is the book on the um, left here. It's written by Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli, and this is where you get it. Go to www. I want all of you to, especially the new Shahadas, you need this book because this book helps to explain what those articles of belief entail. So you go to www.atliaonline.com. There's the address. And this is the book. Type and search the articles of belief. Okay, the book is only $5, and with the shipping, it's only $10. And today, we're covering pages one through eight, but in reality, pages three through six. Okay, so everybody take out your book, turn to page three, and again, screenshot. In fact, screenshot this, because this is the first page, so that when the class is over, you can print everything out, Staple it together and uh, put a paper clip to page three of the book. So you will have my notes and my explanation. Okay. Everybody got that? So take a screenshot. Plus you will have the link to the, his, his, uh, the website. That's a picture of Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli, which you already know how he looked. Yeah, I know. He got his, you know, he done got 20 years younger. Yeah, his beard is brown now, but uh, yeah, that's that's the man. All right. <laughs> okay, and let's get started. Page three. All right. We have uh, uh, this hadith here that I want you guys to ponder. You've heard me mention this hadith many times. The prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, told one of his companions, let me give y'all the history of this hadith. After the prophet uh, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had migrated to Medina, he had began to you know, spread the word of Islam. 
he sent some of his companions to Yemen to teach the people in Yemen about the religion because they had an interest, an interest in Islam. And one of the ambassadors or the first messengers that the prophet Muhammad appointed to convey the message of the truth. And when I say messenger, I don't mean prophet. I mean messenger of the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What the word messenger means in English, a person that is conveying a message, not a prophet. The first ambassador, one of the first ambassadors of Islam was Mu'ad. Mu'ad ibn Jabal, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, he said, oh Mu'ad, you are going to the people of the book. Let the first thing be that you invite them to la ilaha illallah. And if they accept this, then tell them that Allah has made prayer obligatory upon them five times a day. So this is a hadith that's letting us know that whenever we're giving dawah to the people, whenever we're teaching people about this way of life, we begin with letting them know what la ilaha illallah, Muhammad or Rasulullah is. This is the way of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And once the people understand what la ilaha illallah, Muhammad or Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam means, then we teach them about the prayer. And after they understand that, then we tell them of the fasting. And then we tell them of zakat, you know, in stages, as you can see. We don't go and give dawa by engaging in debates with leaders of different churches and organizations. That's not the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And unfortunately, what Sheikh Atli put in his book is, unfortunately, this is what a lot of the people are doing today. Instead of the Muslims today following the way of the prophet and, and, and telling the people uh, what la ilaha illallah entails, they're busy arguing and debating the religion with the Christians. You go to any city in America, you go to downtown, you're gonna find Muslims sitting with tables on the middle of the street, arguing, debating with the non-Muslims calling themselves giving dawah. You're not giving dawah because if, Dawa is an action of worship and all acts of worship must be done the way Allah commanded. We talked about that in our well out, well better class. When it comes to all actions of worship, they must be done the way Allah commanded. He did not command us to debate. He did not command us to argue. He did not command us to organize rallies, to protest drug abuse. He did not command us to organize rallies to, to protest abortion and things like that. Instead, he commanded us to call the people, let the first thing be that you invite them to lie la high la law. This is the most serious issue as we've been speaking about in our six o'clock class. Aqeedah, 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 your belief system. Does everybody understand that? If your belief system is not correct, then none of your deeds are accepted. None of your deeds are accepted. We talked about the hadith of the bankrupt man. You don't wanna be the bankrupt person on the day of judgment who stands before Allah with none of your deeds accepted because your belief system was not correct. And the worst kind of sin that any of us can commit is associating partners with Allah. And this is what Sheikh Atli speaks about.
in the beginning of this book. This is page three. He goes into speaking about what associating partners with a law entails. Listen to what a law says in the interpretation of the meaning. And indeed, it has been revealed to you, O Muhammad, as it was to those messengers who came before you. You see that? For the sister, all the prophets of Allah came with the same message. All the prophets of Allah were of the same religion. All the prophets of Allah lived their lives submitting to Allah. They were Muslim. That's what Muslim means. A person who submits to Allah. Their religion was Islam, which means total submission to Allah. Allah is telling us that right here in this verse. If you join others in worship with Allah, then surely all your deeds will be in vain and you will be amongst the losers. I want all of you to take a screenshot of this. There was a brother that used to come here. Y'all remember, brother, he stopped coming two weeks ago because he didn't believe in this. He told me that he believed you can be Christian and go to paradise. He was upset because his wife, he said, is a Christian and she believes she's a believer. And I told him that contradicts what Allah says. Look at this. Allah says, if you join others in worship with him, then all your deeds will be in vain. That means you're going to be the bankrupt man. There's the Dalil. You're going to be that bankrupt person. This is why it is so important to, ch to, to check your belief system. And this is why here at Sunnah Followers, you hear Dr. Dramali say it all the time. You hear Dr. Asim say it. You hear Sheikh Atli say it. You heard Sheikh Morsi say it yesterday. Akita, Akita, Akita is everything here. We specialize in Akita and then the, the Sunna and Sira at this website. Okay? Excuse me, Layla. Huh? And they said, can you take the sign down so they can screenshot? Why come they can't screenshot? It's still, everything's there. I want to have a Sunna follower thing on there. Is that in the way of, of it's not in the way of y'all's type, is it? What does it look like when they do it? Yeah, it's up there. It's going to be in the way. Wait a minute. Hold on. Uh, if I do this, it's going to mess up my PowerPoint. Wait a minute. Okay. Hold on for a minute. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Hold on for a minute, guys. Is it coming? Is that off now? Wait a minute. Let me, let's make sure I'm not. Okay. Hopefully. It's on. Okay. Yes, it's on. All right, guys. Okay. So there it is. That's the evidence. You know, if you join others and worship with Allah, then none of your good deeds mean anything. And this is also the Dalil for the person that asked me about Mother Teresa. Remember, I told you guys, Mother Teresa was a Kafir. She was not a believer. She was a Catholic, the worst type of calf, a Kafir. She was a Catholic and Catholics worship idols. She prayed to the Virgin Mary. I don't care how many orphans she helped. It doesn't matter how many poor she helped. As Allah said, if you join others in worship with him, surely all your deeds will be in vain. So Mother Teresa, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't make the law. Allah did. And she knew about Islam because she rolled in a circle with many Muslims. She went to many Muslim countries too. She was on a dower wagon with a lot of Muslims. All right. 
So we have to be careful attributing people who die upon something other than la ilaha la, 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 la as being believers. And this is what, um, oh, I gotta go back to this. Hold on, uh, what page am I on? Let me, okay, wait a minute. And this is what Sheikh Atli um, emphasizes here. He says, we must bring Islam to the people. We must call the people to the correct belief system. And by the way, what does the Arabic word aqida mean? I tell you, it means belief system. So for the new Shahadas, whenever you read an, an, a, a book and you see this word aqida, it means belief system. We have to bring Islam to the people. And what does Islam mean? Islam means total submission to Allah. So we have to bring total submission to Allah to the people and call them to the correct belief system. We have to bring them to la ilaha illallah. We have to make the people aware of who their master and ruler is. It's not Jesus, alayhi salam. It's not the prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa salam. It ain't Mother Teresa, it's not Mary, it's Allah. We have to teach the people about Allah. He is the one who guides. He is the one who legislates. And by the way, for you new Shahadas, this should have been discussed before you even took your Shahada. We find Daya today not following the Sunnah. Like I tell you guys, just because people claim to be Salafi don't mean they are. Salafi is not a noun anyway. It's a verb. Just because people claim to be upon the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't mean that they are. Talk is cheap. In Islam, your actions speak. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whatever is in the heart will show through the limbs, through your actions. These people should not have been talking to you about hijab. They should not have been talking to you about polygamy. They should not have been talking to you about that stuff. Instead, they should have done what the prophet commanded Mu'ad to do, tell them about Allah. They should have been telling you what it means to believe in Allah. They should have been breaking down that shahada the way I do. This is what we need to bring to the society, the proper belief in Allah, not all that other stuff. If we began with the proper belief in Allah, then everything else would fall into place. Because once a person truly believes la ilaha illallah, then he will submit. He will submit to the rest. Listen to what the prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and I want you brothers, you brothers who have chosen to marry Kafir women. I have about three of you in here. For you three brothers who have chosen to marry Kafir women, let's forget about whether or not your marriage is, va is valid. Most likely it ain't. But anyway, that's another question for another day. Listen to what the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. He said, whoever among the Christians and the Jews who hears of me, but does not affirm his belief in what I brought and who dies in that state will be amongst the people of hell. So where's the brother who wanted to debate with me three weeks ago? about his calf or wife. Where's the brother that said that I was a sinful woman because I was telling you guys that any Christian who doesn't convert will be in hell. Here's the Dalil, look at the source, look at the source. Didn't I tell y'all it was Sahih Muslim? There it is. This is why we can't make statements that like that, that my Christian wife 
is going to be in paradise. Your Christian wife knows about Islam because she's married to you, but she don't believe in what you believe in. She doesn't believe in what the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. And if she don't convert, she's going to be in hell. She ain't going to be in paradise. You're crazy. Okay. This is clear. I keep telling you guys, Islam, you know, what makes our way of life so great is because it's clear. Allah doesn't speak in riddles. And he sent our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be a guide. The prophet Muhammad completed the mission of Jesus. Jesus didn't complete his mission. Moses didn't complete his mission either. Abraham didn't complete his either. The prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam completed not only his own mission, but the mission of every messenger and prophet that came before him. That's why I tell you, yes, Jesus will always be a prophet of Allah. We all know that. But he's not coming back here as no prophet, meaning he ain't coming back here to teach about uh, a new way of life, a new religion. He's coming back to reaffirm what the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. Just like the hadith, when Umar, ready Allahu anha, found a Torah and he was reading it, and he kept following the prophet Muhammad saying, listen to this, listen to this. The prophet got angry. He said, Umar, don't you know if Moses were here today, he'd have no choice but to follow me and my Sunnah. That hadith is authentic too. It's in Bukhari and Muslim. Okay. We're not teaching you out the crack of our mouths here at Sunnah Followers. Everything that we're teaching you guys is based on Hadith, authentic Hadith and Quran. We're not making this stuff up. And why do I use PowerPoint? I use PowerPoint so you can see it with your own two eyes. You can see I ain't making it up. You can see Sheikh Atli didn't make it up. We give you the source. We always give you the source. Subhana Allah. All right. There are some Muslims amongst us, and this is what I like. I like how Sheikh Atli goes into detail about this issue here. He said, there are some Muslims amongst us that will say that the people of the book are our brothers. How many of you have heard that? How many of you have went to a masjid and you've heard your imam refer to the Christians and Jews as being his brothers? There was a famous speaker that used to speak here at Sun on Sunnah followers over 20 years ago, very famous. We ended up kicking him out of here. I didn't kick him out. Sheikh Atlee kicked him out and Sheikh Morsi, very famous uh, speaker, used to be a Christian and he converted to Islam. He made a, a many mistakes, but the mistake that caused him to get kicked out of here was he kept referring to the Jews and Christians as being our brothers. He kept referring to them as praying to the same God that we pray to. Sheikh Atli and Sheikh Morsi said, that's enough, Layla, get him out of here. And then when we got him out of here, Jamali okayed it too, because we had Jamali here back then too. Jamali asked, what happened to so-and-so? I told him Sheikh Atli and Sheikh Morsi told me to kick him out. He said, good riddance, because we can't do this. We can't refer to them as being our brothers in faith. How can they be our brothers in faith? They're not going to paradise. 
Allah established brotherhood amongst the Muslims, not amongst the Jews and Christians. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning. The believers are nothing else than brothers in Islamic religion. So make reconciliation between your brothers and fear Allah so that you may receive mercy. This is a verse of the Quran that my cousin Mukhtar broke down and explained to you guys not too long ago. This is Surat al-Hujurat, Hujurat. Allah is clear. The believers are nothing else than brothers in Islamic religion, not Christianity. You can't refer to a Christian or a Jew as being your brother. Supana Allah. So the believers, and who are the believers? The believers are not Christians. They're not Jews. They're Muslims. The believers are our brothers. And that's what we've been speaking about in the Wallawa Better class. Our allegiance, when we testify, as Dr. Jamali said, to Layallah, Hayallah, Muhammad, Dor, Rasulallah, we're also pledging allegiance to Allah, allegiance to the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and allegiance to the believers, no matter where they are in the world. The black man is not my brother. The Arab is not my brother. The white man is not my brother. The Spanish man is not my brother. Your brother and sister are the Muslims, whoever they are, whatever color they are. Subhana Allah, I tell you guys all the time, when I did my DNA test three years ago, it was so of shocking for me to find out that I have so, I got 30%, basically I can summarize it, to 30% Viking, 30% Arabic, and the rest is all from uh, uh, af every country in Africa. And I got 1% Chinese and uh, uh, everything except Native American. That's what's weird. I have no Native American blood in me at all. But with all my, my background, my brothers are those Muslims. Anyone who declares la Allah, la la, it doesn't matter if they're from Africa, if they're from Norway, if they're from China, if they're from uh, Bangladesh, anyone that declares la Allah, la la, Muhammad Dor Rasulullah is my brother and sister in Islam. Remember, guys, Allah tells us in the interpretation of the meaning, the believers, men and women, are awliya. That's an Arabic word that means helpers, supporters, protectors, and friends of each other. A lot of us have allegiance, misplaced allegiance. Your allegiance shouldn't be to a person because they're black and you're black. Your allegiance, my allegiance shouldn't be to a person because she's Egyptian. Your allegiance shouldn't be to that person because they come from Norway. No, our allegiance is what brings us together is Layla, Hayla, Law, Muhammad, Dor, Rasulullah. That means our life, our honor, and our property are sacred with each other. We talked about that in Walla Walla Battle. The simple fact that that person over there in a different part of the world, in Antarctica, testifies to la ilaha illallah muhammad dor rasulullah she's my sister she's my sister and her life her honor and her property are sacred to me we're helpers supporters friends and protectors of each other you hurt her i'm gonna come and defend her if she needs help i'm gonna be there to help her to support her. Your spiritual ties, as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another authentic hadith, what's the source? What's the source? Sahih Muslim. Your spiritual ties are stronger than your blood ties. Y'all understand that? 
So before we establish anything, we have to have the proper belief system. And that belief system should first entail believing in Allah and then believing in all the articles that he commands us to believe in. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning. Know therefore that there is no God but Allah. So ask forgiveness for your faults. Subhana Allah. Subhana Allah. This is what they should have taught you. Whoever gave you sisters shahada, they should have went over all of this that I'm going over with you today and what I go over every day at six. That should have been how what they should have been teaching you. Not polygamy. Because that's what most of you sisters are into. They told you that you got to marry and be a part of four wives and live in the same house, which ain't even true. They should have been teaching you sisters this stuff, not that other stuff, okay? And again, the most important thing to acknowledge is Allah, how he is one, his names, his attributes. What I teach here at Sunnah followers, what do I teach? Akita, Akita, Akita. I teach you, I spend one day out the week teaching you the meaning of Allah's names. Every day of the week, I'm teaching you what it means to believe in Him, what it means to worship Him alone. The closer you get to understanding Allah's names, the stronger your faith will become. And the stronger your faith becomes, then you'll find it easy to submit. Then if why is it that some of you sisters have been Muslim for a year and you're not wearing a hijab? Some of you other sisters were born Muslim and have been Muslim for 20, 30 years and still don't wear hijab. It's because your belief in Allah is tainted. If your parents had a taught you Allah's names, that would have helped you to develop a relationship with him and to love him. And then you would have submitted like I did. I've been wearing hijab since I was seven years old. Latifa will tell you. I don't even know what it feels like to not wear a hijab. The sun has never touched this hair. And I'm probably glad it ain't because it'll probably turn fire red if it did. But my mother raised me up upon La Yalah, Allah, Muhammad Dor Rasulullah taught me those names. The first book I ever read was a Hadith book. That was my first book. Subhana Allah. So we need to learn about Allah. Learning about him will cause us, help us to submit to him because there is nothing like him. You cannot be part of him, nor can he be part of you like the Sufis say. We talked about the Mutazali. One of the things about the Mutazali, we talked about it in our Well or Better class. Many of them believe that Allah made them do it. They believe that Allah doesn't create evil. He's the creator of everything but evil. We create our own evil. None of that crap is true. And then you got some Sufis that believe in the union of Allah. We talked about how there are some Sufis. We had a couple of sisters come in here and tell us about how their imam said, when you reach a certain level of understanding of Akita, you don't have to pray anymore. Remember that? Remember we had a sister last Ramadan say that the imam of her mosque told her, well, since you go to Sister Layla's classes, you don't have to pray or fast because you're on a higher level in your understanding of Akita, a stock for law. I never heard anything like that before. I had to call Sheikh Morsi on that. I said, what is this stuff? Sufism. They believe in the union with the law. We don't have this crap in Islam. 
okay? So it's important, guys, for us to learn what it means to believe in Allah because so many of us fall short in that. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning. Have you seen him who takes his de low desires as his God? This is another way of associating partners with Allah. Some of us put our imams, our sheikh, our love for sex, our love for alcohol, our love for drugs, subhanAllah, you brothers. A lot of you brothers tell me that you can't stop smoking weed. Why not? Why not? Have you seen the brother who takes his desires as his God? Is that what you brothers are doing? You've now made marijuana your God? Your love for marijuana is greater than your love for Allah? Subhana Allah. I want y'all to think about that. Anytime we deliberately and knowingly and intentionally disobey Allah to please ourselves, this is shirk. This is associating partners with Allah. Everybody understand that? As Muslims, we don't put our love for anything over him. Not your love for your husband, your wife, not your love for yourself, your children, your parents. Allah is first. Then comes his prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then you love yourself. Because as the prophet said, how can you save your soul from the hellfire if you don't love yourself? Subhana Allah. As Muslims, our knowledge comes from Allah through the Quran. And our guidance comes from the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through the hadiths, which are his examples. We believe what the prophet Muhammad believed, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when it comes to understanding, our understanding should be like what those companions had. That's why we don't teach math abs here. I'm going to teach Islam in its truthfulness based on the Quran and the authentic hadith with the understanding of those companions because Allah tells us the best of this nation were those who were with the prophet and then those that came after them and those who came after them. So if there's an issue that we don't understand, you're not going to see us going to a fatwa. We're going to look to see what those original companions had to say about it. What did the companions say about a woman covering their face? What did the companions say about makeup? What did the companions say about intoxicants? That's the correct belief system, guys. Everybody understand that? And make sure y'all screenshot this. Take a screenshot. And again, guys, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent with the message and he believed in what was revealed to him from Allah and so do all the true believers. How can you call your Kafir Christian wife a believer when she's telling you she don't believe in the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? When she tells you that she don't believe in the angels, when she's telling you that she don't believe in, in the, the commands of Allah. I'm sorry, your wife is a Kafir and you need to question whether or not your marriage is even lawful, okay? All the believers believe in Allah, his angels, his books and his messengers. And the true believers say we don't make a distinction between any of his messengers. The believers, when they are told what Allah says, they simply say, oh Allah, we hear you and we obey you. Oh Allah, we seek your forgiveness and to you is the final destination. Look how many Muslims today are questioning Allah. 
One of the biggest problems we have is this dreadlock stuff. God, I don't understand how you Muslim women and men can get it twisted. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is clear. He said, anyone who has hair must comb it, oil it, brush it, wash it on a regular basis. He said, don't walk around with your hair knotted over your head looking like the jinn. He said the jinn wear their hair in knots. He said we should do the opposite of the jinn. That's clear, that hadith is Bukhari. But we still got Muslims trying to justify walking around looking like a jinn. The believers don't ask that. The believers say, okay, you've given me the Dalil, Sister Layla. So they'll say, oh Allah, we hear and we obey. And they cut them nasty dreadlocks out and keep it moving. But a lot of you still have hangups. You don't want to accept what your Lord says. Subhana Allah. And again, our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the, our example. As Allah says, he has believed in him. And so do the believers. So did those companions. So again, our teacher and example is the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's the life coach. I get so sick and tired of these Muslims today referring to themselves as being a life coach. How can you be my life coach? You are a nobody. You're just a peon peasant. The life coach of the believer is the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's my life coach. He completed his mission. He taught me how to handle myself in good times and bad times, how to clean myself, how to, how to, how to even wipe myself after answering the call of nature, what to do with a menses, what to do as a wife, a mother. My, my life coach is the prophet Muhammad and his companions, they are my mentors. If I need a mentor, I'll go and choose Aisha, ready Allahu on her. I'll choose Um Salama, ready Allahu on her. I'll choose Atika, ready Allahu on her. I don't need no mentoring or no life coaching from nobody here today. Because Allah is clear, the best of this nation were those originals and those first three generations. And we got enough of them. There were thousands of companions, guys. There were thousands of companions. There's enough of them to make your hero rather than choosing these backward Muslims of today. And again, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the best of the people are those in his century and then those that came after them and those after them. So do you think someone hundreds of years after the companions would know more than they do? This is a problem with the Muslim youth today. You brothers, you're busy fighting with each other. My sheikh taking fatwa. My sheikh said this, who is your sheikh? You think your sheikh knows more than Aisha knew? You think your sheikh knows more than what Ibn Umar knew? Supana Allah, our belief system is based on the teachings of Allah and his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of those companions. We have this famous hadith by Umar, radiallahu anha. He said, one day while we were sitting with the prophet, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a man approached us dressed in white clothing. He had dark black hair and he didn't look like he was a traveler. 
and none of us knew who he was. He sat before the people. He sat before in front of the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and rested his knees against his. And he put his hands on the prophet's thigh and he said, tell me about faith. And the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, faith is to believe in Allah, to believe in his angels, to believe in his books, his messengers, and the last day and to believe in the divine destiny, both the good and the bad. And then the man said, you have told the truth. Subhana Allah, as you guys should know, because this is a famous hadith. This was the hadith of Jibreel. This was the angel Jibreel, alayhi salam. And who was Jibreel? He was the teacher. He was the teacher, the teacher the teacher of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who had come to teach the prophet, to quiz him on what he had taught him previously, to see if he understood what faith was. That's why I always quiz you. Like I said, the difference between a lecturer and a teacher, a lecturer comes and gives a lecture, gets his paycheck, Adios, that's it. A teacher is different. A teacher is going to lecture, break it down, answer questions, and then come back and quiz you to see if you got it right. How many of you have teachers? Every Muslim on this planet should have a teacher because seeking knowledge is an obligation that Allah imposed upon each and every one of us. I should be able to go to any one of you and say, who's your teacher? If anybody came to me, Layla, who's your teacher? Sheikh Morsi. My other two teachers are dead, but Sheikh Morsi is, is, is still here. You know, who's your teacher? You cannot teach yourself this deen, and that's the problem. Muslims today think that all they got to do, pick up a book and start reading, and now you know the religion. Then we got other Muslims who are so uneducated, they think that all they got to do is go get married. And they think because I got married, now 50% of the knowledge of Islam is going to fall down on me. Boy, what, how stupid. That hadith has nothing to do with that. That hadith ain't talking nothing about that. But that's how twisted we are. You can't teach yourself this deen. The Prophet Muhammad didn't teach himself. He learned from Jibreel, alayhi salam. So I'm going to stop right here for today. This serves as the introduction to what we're going to be speaking about for the next few months. Again, this class, I'm going to hold it every Saturday and Sunday. And this class goes hand in hand with what I teach every other day of, this, of the week, which is while I were better. This is the Aqidah of the, of the believer. This is our Islamic creed that we need to know. This is the stuff we need to know to get through the questioning of the grave. This is the stuff we need to know on the day of judgment. You ain't got to know nothing about that polygamy and politics and crap, but you got to know this stuff. If you don't know this stuff, nothing else is accepted. All right, so we're going to stop right here. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik.